It took us four years to find the perfect RV for us, and during those four years of research, there was always one name that stood out above the rest for customer service and taking care of their people, and that was Grand Design. And since we've moved into this RV, we've had to take it back to Grand Design to get some things work done. And we're going to tell you if they live up to their reputation. Yourself, it's like a kiss of death Instead of doing what you're doing You get caught up in your head Feet on the road with your eyes on the prize Inch by inch, one step at a time You're losing hope when you can't find A way to speed up the timeline But one day, though it might be a while It's gonna be worth every mile If you just hold on Hold on, hold on. Hold on. yeah Lift your eyes off the ground You only I'm Sean. I'm Matthew, and we are Broken Dreams Reborn. Welcome to our Grand Design Reflection Bedroom. Mm -hmm. um, one of the main issues that we had with our Grand Design on week one was our reading lights up here above the, I don't know if you can see, above our heads, you know, when we lay down to sleep at night. The first week, they just stopped working, and we're like, what is going on? And we were only a mile from Lazy Days, and so... We're like, we are not bringing the RV, and this was our first mm -hmm. time towing. We were already set up, so they said, okay, well, we can send a mobile tech out. So the mobile tech came out, and what did he find? He found that the wires were disconnected, and so he reconnected them. And he said, well, he said it kind of looked like they were just laid under there. So yeah. I kind of just reconnected them and kind of moved them in a, a better bit. place or yeah. cooled them up. I don't know. And we're like, great. And he even let the slide in and out, in and out, you know, while he was there and it was working fine. And so we moved to our next place and then we were set up for a month. So it was still fine. But when we moved to Georgia, the lights didn't work again, which mm -hmm. means the slide had caught the wires again. And we're like, great. What is the, what's the problem with this? And then by then, we noticed there were two more lights out in the bedroom and there were yeah. some lights that were flickering on and off in the um, other part of the RV. So And the blue light under the slide outside so you don't bonk your head, that was out. So I don't know if you can tell, but this light is really bright. We have three puck lights in the bedroom and this one's bright. And then we have another one over here by the closet it's really dim, like it barely puts out any light. And then we have one here that's out. So the bedroom is like really dark, especially if you don't have the blinds open, which I have open right now. And then the reading lights above the bed, they don't work either. And that's usually when the bedroom slide goes in and out, the wires are under the bed and they get yanked out and so then these lights stop working. So the next thing we noticed was what looked like a small crack in the front cap of the RV. It was underneath by the kingpin, the part where you walk under it and look straight up, that's where it was. And so that gave us an end to Grand Design because they said, hey, you can bring it by here and we can fix it at our facility. And they said, would you be able to make it up to Indiana? We're like, yeah, we're full-time <laughs> RVers. No problem at all. So so how did that help us? It helped us because we kept having a problem with the bedroom slide. And we actually had, as we discussed before, a mobile tech fix it, but it broke again. So we're like, okay, well, can y'all look at the bedroom slide too? And they're like, sure, since you're already going to be here. And then we're like, well, what else? And Because they just, he did say that. He said, if you have any other problems we need to mm -hmm. look at, then, you know, 
Uh, Do it while you're here. Right, write it down. And so the next problem was our water heater. What happened with the water heater was we noticed sometimes it would get up to temperature. It's a tankless water heater, which means as long as you have room in your gray tank, you can have as much water as you want to. And we love that. But what we noticed is that if we set it to 100 degrees, for example, I know that's kind of cold, then it'll go up to 100 degrees and stay there all day sometimes and other times you'll set it to 100 degrees and it'll go up to 110 down to 95 up to 120 down to 97 literally like a yo-yo like that you're like burning freezing burning freezing and some people love it on 120 degrees um you can comment down below what your favorite temperature is for taking a shower um but if we set it in the low hundreds up to 110 or so, it would just go crazy. And so we didn't know what the problem was there. So they said they would look at that. And that's after having already had the water heater warrantied out, they had a mobile tech come out and replace it for us and it still did the same darn thing. So we thought what better opportunity than to have Grand Design themselves look at it. So that was a blessing. Right, and it was also a Furion water a Furion tankless water heater and mm -hmm. Furion themselves said since Grant, it was still under warranty with Grand Design that yeah. Grand Design needed to deal with that. Um, so after that we were like for some reason we wanted to check the capacity of our fresh tank because we <laughs> want to moondock and we checked it and ooh, we were not happy. We we're like this makes no sense so you mm -hmm. contacted our customer service agent which I think yeah. was Dwayne and was explaining it to him and they said sure we will drop the water tank and we will check that for you as well yep and I think that's all that we had them look at okay so our appointment was on a Tuesday but they said we could come in on a Sunday and they have um, not full hookup sites but they had water and electric so mm -hmm. we could stay there on their site Okay, so this is our Grand Design site at the service center. We took site number one, and we got all of... They provide you a picnic table and two chairs. There's a bunch of Grand Designs over there. There's their service center. I think that's the gate we go to in the morning. It's a concrete pad. They give you water and electric. 50 amp. And there's the water. Sides are really long. I don't know how long, but it fits our um, fifth wheel that's 36 feet and our truck with still plenty of room. So that's our site, and we have one other person that's pulled in since we've been here. And there's still six spots left. I think they have eight. And there's a whole bunch of reflections across the street. And we're back in Amish town because we've seen the horse and the buggies go down the road. It's very windy. And we got a little tree on our lot. <laughs> so we wanted to get there on Sunday because we didn't know how full they were going to be. And we wanted to make sure that we got a spot. We were the first people there. And so we parked it and we got to walk around the property of Grand Design, which was really cool to see. We're going out again. I like concrete pads. Y'all, we are at Grand Design. Where's Matthew? Get over here. Y'all, we're <laughs> Y'all, we're at Grand Design Service Center and we're currently at their little campground. And we're gonna go walk around and look at the grounds. They probably can't walk through the gate. Do not walk through the gate. Might set off Grand Design alarms. Yep. 
So they have lots of transcends over there. And then look, there's a whole bunch over there. That looks like what, imagine travel trailers over there. Lots of them. And they're probably oh. all sold already by the dealerships. Oh look, they have um, a momentum for... Um, United States Honor Flag. Oh, that's cool. I haven't seen that before. So they have like six bay doors right here, and then they have their building, probably where their offices is. And it you says know, customer service right there. That might be where we go. Like when you call them, that's probably where they're sitting, in this little building right here. Could be. And then look, they have more bay doors. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. They have 14 bay doors. Wow. Yeah, I think this is where they make the RVs. Is that the frames? Those are the chassis. Oh, awesome. And I don't know if those are travel trailers or fifth wheels. I have no idea. Oh, that's like the beginning. Yeah, and there's all the toilets. Oh, <laughs> the toilets. By the time we wake up tomorrow, they will be in full swing. Y'all, we heard that they start at like 6 a.m. That is like insane. That means we have to get up at 5 a.m. to have the RV ready by 6. It's just not natural. Yeah, this might be the transcend plan. We yep. ran into a security guard. He said, you, you're you fine to walk around here, but don't go past this fence. He was very nice. And he explained to us everything he knew about their operations. And he was very informative. And uh, he said, you can go anywhere you want mm -hmm. to. Just keep in mind, if you go back, back here on the mm -hmm. way back, that they're sensitive about that. It was like a ghost town. And then, um, mm -hmm. and he was very knowledgeable too. And he oh, yeah. also told us, he's like, why don't you just check in on Monday just to see if they can get you in mm -hmm. early? And we're like, oh, okay. And when we got back to our RV, I think two more RVs had pulled in at that point. I don't remember. I think maybe two or three. And so, and then we got woke up at 3 a.m. anyways with all this beeping and stuff. I'm like, what is it? They start at like 3 to 4 o'clock in the morning. Because Some of them do. They yeah. have a huge Amish workforce i think they said 55 56 percent of their workforce are amish and they have other responsibilities in their community uh farms families everything they have going on in life so they start really early in the day and grand design told us we start when they start because they're our workforce <laughs> so um we decided we were going to work Monday because we knew they were not going to be looking at our rig, but we decided to go. We walked over there to the customer service desk that was in the service bay, mm -hmm. and they went ahead and filled out the paperwork and stuff, and they said, well, there's a chance we might can get you in today. And we're like, oh, okay, well, just let us know because we had our desk set up and everything because we were working from the rig. And she, her name was Valerie, and she yeah. came and knocked on the door, and she said, um, can you have it broke down in like 30 minutes? It was like during the headlights. We're like, really? She's like, yeah, we're going to take it in, but we're probably going to keep it overnight. We're like, well, can you not bring it back out and we can stay in it in the night? She said, well, let me check. She came back and she said, no, that's a no-go. We have to keep the rig overnight because we're going to drop the tank and everything like that. We're going to put you in a hotel, so can you be ready in 30 minutes? We're like, an hour, okay. maybe? <laughs> And because we're like, this is our rig. And so we had to think, what do we need on the oh. fly to take to the hotel? But And we're and, not good at packing for hotels. That's why mm -hmm. we live in an RV. We take everything with us. So we had to break our desk down. I was in the middle of a job. I had to finish mm -hmm. it real quick, break the desk down, because, you know, they were going to be moving our RV and um, pack everything that we thought that we needed for the hotel. And the hotel wasn't going to let us check in till 3 so this was like before lunchtime and so we got everything ready and she said don't worry if you forgot something you can always access your rig as long as we're open in the service bay and that made us feel mm -hmm. so much better so we got our rig all packed up the slides in um, our water unhooked our electric unhooked and then there was one more thing that we needed to do yeah uh we have a capture plate it's a big metal i don't know iron steel something plate on our pin box that works with our sliding hitch so we can 
turn it turns automatically the hitch while the rig turns as we turn corners don't going down the road we had to take that off because their tractors didn't need that and it actually made it difficult for them to maneuver it around so they took it off and just put it in our bay for us and yeah. then they were we saw our rig it towed it off you know with their little it tow motor or forklift thing whatever they used a variety of different equipment <laughs> There it goes, our reflection lady bell. She's going back to where she was born. Uh-huh. And all the beautiful silver on the roof. It was kind of sad, but um, oh, one funny thing before that first night we were there, we were just laying in the bed sleeping and our blinds just came up. Like it just shot up all of a sudden and Matthew said, oh, that's just... Lady Bill, that's the name of Army. She's just excited to be back home because that's where she was born and made and stuff. So I thought that was kind of neat. Yeah, she was showing up. So um, we weren't allowed to check into the hotel yet. So we left and went and found us something to eat. And um, then we got to go to the RV museum, which was really neat. We enjoyed our time there. And then we mm -hmm. checked into the hotel and we were there for the until Tuesday. And then they said, mm -hmm. by the way, um, well, we called Grand Design to see if we could get a tour because they still had our rig and um, we couldn't work or anything. And we wanted a tour of the reflection, um, what, warehouse part or whatever? The manufacturing facility, yeah. So Matthew had called and they said, unfortunately, we're booked for our tours for like, what, a month? Yeah, it, weeks? Was, it was at least weeks, yeah. And we're mm -hmm. like, oh, okay. And they said, but, you know, we'll... Uh, let me talk to the manager or whatever, and then we'll get him to call you back. Mm -hmm. And so the manager had called back and said that one of the service girls, it wasn't Valerie, it was the other was one. We, Emily? Yeah, Emily had called in and asked mm -hmm. for on our behalf if they would be willing to give us a tour. <laughs> so we got a private tour of our reflection plant. Yeah, and they give you the tour, or at least they gave us a tour when they're closed. So all the lights were on, all the machines were there, all the rigs in various stages were there. They didn't let us film, but it was all there, uh, except we weren't in the worker's way, which is important because it's a real working place. Mm -hmm. They have their rhythm done. You don't want to be putzing around making them mess things up. So they gave us this private tour. We had the, literally the whole place to ourselves, no janitors or anything. It was great. It was more than we ever bargained for. It was awesome. We got mm -hmm. to wear these orange vests that said Grand Design on the back. He let us keep them because they didn't have yeah. any swag at the time. He said, I wish I had some swag, but we don't. But you can keep the vest. <laughs> and he took our picture in the plant. That yeah. was like the only picture that we had from the plant. So then after our tour was over, we heard that they were done with our reflection. And now we'll get to tell you what the results that they found. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's start with the bedroom lights. In our bedroom, we have an east to west bed. It moves in and out on the slide. So when the slide goes out, so does the bed. Why does that have to do with lights? Because they routed the cords for the lights under the bed. Now that might not be a big problem, except it kind of ran along the carpet, snagging on the carpet. So the first thing they did was rerouted it. I don't know where exactly, but they rerouted it so that should no longer be a problem. But that's not the main issue. The main issue are something called a WAGO connector, W-A-G-O. I hope you can see this. Basically, the wire goes in here, and these little things flip up, and when you're done, snap them down. Now, the problem with these little guys is when the little top part flips up, the wire comes out, and that happens when they can snag on carpet, and as I said, the lines were routed along the carpet, at least in part of it. So when they manufacture these things, they use, at least the reflections, they use these WAGO connectors. What the, manu what the service side said was, we here in service don't particularly care for the WAGO connectors, so they put on crimp connectors. How many did they replace? All of them. Every one they could find. Literally, I'm not exaggerating. They took all of the WAGO connectors for the lights in the bedroom. They replaced all of the WAGO connectors they could find in the rest of the RV for lights and other things. And every electrical issue that we had, except one, was fixed by replacing these with a standard crimped style splicer connection. 
for you electricians, I might not be using the words right, forgive me. Um, the only one that they didn't fix by that was one particular light above our theater seating and that whole light just needed to be replaced. But otherwise, 98% of our electrical issues were all solved because of replacing these stinking little things. So good job for finding that. Uh, what was the next thing they looked at? Well, the reason they also replaced them everywhere besides the bedroom is because it's an earthquake going down mm -hmm. the road so for some reason that can make those pop open too just i guess a bunch of vibrations from the road do you know how long it would have taken me to try to figure that out <laughs> let alone go ahead and take every light out and fix it no they did it they yeah did it. so our next issue was our tankless furion water heater so they figured it out y'all um at first, because these Furion tankless water heaters are new. I mean, it's new to Furion, not to mention new grand design. So they told us at the end that they looked into our issue, our complaint, and they didn't just read a bunch of manuals, which they did. They reached out to other professionals, people who they go to, their go-to people for answers. And they weren't going to stop until they had it figured out, and this is what they told us. And they did figure it out, and basically it comes down, at least with the present day uh, versions of these tankless water heaters, it's just the physics of it. If your water pressure is too low, then your water heater is still, if you set it for 100 degrees, 110 degrees, whatever, it's going to try to heat it up to that. It doesn't know that your water pressure is lower. At least our model doesn't. At least the Furion ones don't. I don't know if any of them do. They didn't either. So if you have low water pressure, it's not going through the tubing as fast and it's getting heated up too much. If your water pressure suddenly is good, then it's going through faster and it's getting heated to the proper temperature. That's why we saw the yo-yo effect on the thermostat. They said, really, the only thing you can do is to make sure you have good water pressure, do what it takes, or maybe fill up your water tanks in the RV and use that um, if you're in an RV park where it's particularly terrible. Unfortunately, it's just the physics of it right now. There might be better versions in the future, but for now, it kind of is what it is. But at least, you know, they figured it out, and they didn't just give us an answer like, I don't know you know it works for us no they figured it out and they explained it to us in terms we understood and we're satisfied with that and one thing we noticed when we got back to our rig they removed something that we had replaced on there <laughs> show them what they removed and why they removed it they removed these and i was going to put them back on and they said i wouldn't do that now i know this may be a hot button issue but what they mentioned was these this is like a furnace screen you have at least on ours, we have two ports, one right above the other, where hot air goes out. So you can get these for even your refrigerator. You can get these for the different vents, your dryer vent, if you have a washer and dryer in your RV. And they said that it could restrict airflow and it might, they said might, in their case at least, void the warranty. Now I'm not saying it will, I'm not saying it won't. But they did say at least it can re contribute to the restriction of airflow. They said you should use these kinds of things if you're going to go a long period of time without using your RV. If you're using your RV, if you're using your dryer, your refrigerator, your water heater, then you shouldn't under normal circumstances have an issue with the bugs, the dirt daubers, and that kind of stuff. Do some people? I'm sure they do. But for the most part, you should be good. If you store it, then they would use these and I would use these. We don't plan on storing ours, but not all of you are full time, so you may want to look into these for that circumstance. Our next issue, which I think was the final issue at the service um, bay, was our fresh tank water capacity, which um, mm -hmm. we did do a video on, and we can link that video below about um, the difference between what the manufacturer said our fresh tank should be and what in reality it really was. And um, what did the service department say about that? Well, we did a video on this, as she said, but basically what they told us in a very general nutshell is we do have the like 80 gallon or whatever capacity, but some of that is air. And it has to be, again, because of the physics of it. You can't have a water tank like ours under the RV, which these water tanks, by the way, are not this big beautiful round tank it's like 
a big domino underneath that's flat and wide and it needs air on the top and so not all of that capacity is water so again they weren't going to stop until they figured it out and i very politely told them how much i appreciated everything they did but i really have a problem with the advertising literature counting all of that as water capacity which they explicitly do that's not the fault of the fine men and women who make them and it's not the fault of the men and women who are the technicians so it's important to differentiate between one arm of the company and another so in the beginning we said we would answer the question does grand design live up to the hype do they live up to their reputation do they yes yes they in do. in fact they go above and beyond mm -hmm. like we told you about the lights we only had issues with some of the lights. They decided to replace all of the lights. They even cleaned our tanks when yeah. we um, had it in the service bay. And it looked like they had detailed the inside of the RV too. Everything was like so clean. I think they cleaned the stove and everything. They are just from customer service, like when they sent out our extra water heater or anytime you just need something, they are really good with customer service and we highly recommend Grand Design and we're very happy with Grand Design. Grand Design really proved to us that they care about their users, they care about who uses their equipment, who lives in their equipment, who uh, buys their equipment and they really want their name to mean something and it does to us. Mm -hmm. So if any of y'all have had experience with Grand Design, please leave us a comment below. Mm -hmm. Or if you know of a, another great company that has good customer service and takes care of problems with RVs, then also leave that below because we do have people that read the comments. Mm -hmm. And if you have any questions about this video that maybe we didn't cover a certain part of, you know, when you have to take your RV to Grand Design, we'll be happy to try to answer that for you or find the answer. If you like this video and you want to see us again, just hit that notification bell on your screen and what else? Show us some love and give <laughs> us a thumbs up and please subscribe and share the video as well. All right. See you all later. Bye.